So evaluate your receiver room where you're at kind of midway point of the season. What have you liked? What needs to get uh, cleaned up? What I don't like is right now we're uh, having to battle some injuries right now within the room, you know. Um, that limits some of the co competition that I like to constantly create within the group. Um, uh, I think that uh, those guys who've been injured, you know, they're trying the best they can to fight to try to get back. Um, what I do like is that um, we're, we're getting a lot of five guys really involved pretty heavily with, uh, you know, David Bell, Milton Wright, Brock Thompson, TJ Sheffield, and, and Jackson Anthrop. Each one of them has kind of had their bright moments throughout the season uh, to this point. Um, I do need those guys to step it up even further going forward uh, down the stretch. I mean, we're in the back third of, of the season, and uh, now, you know, they, they, they typically say they remember you in November. So, you know, we're not quite to November yet, but this is the time when you have to really show up and show out as a, as a receiver. What do you tell David when he's getting that, that type of cloud coverage, the shadowing? I mean, it's got to be frustrating. I mean, what types of things do you tell him to, to try to keep him encouraged and get him open? Well, you consistently uh, let him understand that um, in his position, he has a chance to affect the game still because he's taking more defenders away from the rest of the football team. So that is what you have to have him rest his thoughts on is the fact that if I do what I'm supposed to do on this side of the field, there's other guys that should be out there making plays uh, for the football team. So that's how you keep him calm throughout the game. And, uh, you know, I have to do a better job of, you know, noticing that earlier and putting them in different spots you know throughout the game to give them a chance to obviously that's stuff that we've done before um but uh you know they did a pretty good job i mean all kudos to wisconsin they did a good job of disguising a lot of that stuff and uh pushing those guys to them um, for the majority of the game um but you know at the end of the day D david's ready to go you know no matter what he just wants you to throw the ball to him that's all he cares about so throw me the ball when well, he's getting all that coverage that should open up opportunities for others, right? There's no question about it. There's no question about it. And, uh, you know, we have to capitalize when some of those opportunities are come to us. Um, they pushed everybody deep. So, I mean, that's, that's they wanted to make sure to try to not let us hit any deep shots in the game. So that's 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 part of, uh, you know, what happens when you have some guys having some success at the position and they have to understand that, you know, everything underneath, you know, you got to be able to use those opportunities to make those turn into those big plays and they become deep balls when you run after the catch. Have you been happy with Brock's development? Yeah, for the most part, yes. Um, certainly, um, we had a really in-depth conversation about the first interception. You know, I put a lot of pressure on him to, you know, make that that route a little bit more crisp and to come back to the football and attack the football to not give the guy a chance to intercept the football. So there's some tough love, you know, in, in this room. There, You know, I know – Oftentimes, people are wanting to say positive things about some of these guys. At the end of the day, they know it's a lot of tough love. And, and, and rest assured, it is love, um, but it's tough. It's, it's hard nose. It's right in your face. It's gritty. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to get better. And, uh, no, Brock is getting better as a football player here. He's very smart, though, very knowledgeable young man. And you know what? He, he, he takes the arrow in the forehead, meaning that, you know, he looks at himself before he'll blame anything on anybody else. So he's, he's going to always say, you know, uh, no, that's on me. That's on me versus, oh, well, why didn't somebody else do this or that? I mean, so that's that's one thing I really love about the young man. Just the development of TJ. I mean, he had the nice oh, game at Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, just how he's grown into that slot position. And what, and what what is he giving you from that spot? No question. I think that his, he's gotten way more comfortable just from getting the reps and you know I'll be honest with you I wasn't happy with myself uh, not giving him more opportunities when we played Notre Dame and uh, so you know I definitely wanted to make sure he got some more opportunities because you know one partly he's earned it too he's he's capable and um, so I wanted to make sure that he got in there and I, obviously Iowa you know he scores a touchdown there instead of fumbling it into the end zone you know that's that's a massive uh, game and output for the young man but he definitely did some really good things and, and continued to develop. I think that him and T and uh, and Jackson Anthrop's relationship 
um, it, it really bodes well for our program. They they really talk a lot during practice. Even today, Jackson didn't block very well on a, on a particular rep. And, you know, I'm like, TJ, get away from him. You get away from that guy. He doesn't block. So, you know, those those two's relationship is really good, and, and he jumped all over him. So um, that, that part of it, and he's getting better. TJ's getting better. He understands how to turn his shoulders in the proper technique. He's learning how the defenses are structured and and and, and a lot of it is coming getting better with him just being out there on the field how much you miss Mershon Rice and Abdul oh, Rahman you see no a ton I mean those two guys um, it's hard to replace you know one in Mershon Rice his toughness and leadership you know he wasn't around for a whole week because of getting surgery and you know just wasn't around because he was back home after the surgery so it, it, it's tough to have, not have that leadership there you know and, and he's the type of guy that when he can't be out there doing stuff he's not going to be barking at the other guys you know he's going to kind of take a back seat because he knows he's not out there so you know it's, it's really tough from a leadership standpoint and and more than anything else a, a toughness standpoint I mean the kid was playing tough I mean and that's what I mean it, it sucks not having that guy and then obviously Yasin is a technician as a route runner and uh I mean he's he I know he was only out there very little, but he, he's very much a technician and, and he pushes the envelope with everybody because they know that this young man has goals and aspirations and he's pushing everybody just from a, I can play this position and I can play it at a high level um, type of mindset. And the other guys, they see him playing at that kind of level as well and they want to push themselves to play at a higher level. So oh, definitely it sucks missing those guys. What, what can this group do the last part of the season to help the quarterbacks out when they get in trouble? Is it just making sure they come back on their routes a little bit when they're scrambling or is there something else that they need to do here? In the certainly, season? certainly. And I think the, the main thing is just attacking the football. You know, that that's what it has to be about. Um, I say often to the guys, we're not receivers, we're takers. So don't receive the ball, okay? All right, Amazon sends you a package and you receive the package, okay? No, I want to go take what's in the air. So when the ball's in the air, go take it from the air instead of waiting for it to get to you. So I think that if we can take that to heart and be more aggressive in how we go take the football, then I think this group can, can do a lot of good things to help the quarterbacks. Just going back to TJ Sheffield a little bit, you know, as this offense continues to uh, work out some kinks in the red zone specifically, I know TJ's had some success there. Just what is it about his skill set that allows him to succeed kind of when there's not as much space, you know, going into the end zone? You know what, he does have some quickness and change of direction skills um, that, that help in that area. But ultimately, I think that uh, Coach Brown has done just a really good job of you know studying the right things and taking a look back at history and, and making sure we're doing our due diligence as an offensive staff to, to be able to perform better in, in the red zone. Um, I think our guys know and understand and, and, and then talking to them just about the mentality of being in the red zone. I think that's helped a ton. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily just TJ skill set, but obviously those things help a ton. But uh, those change of direction skills and, and quickness, I mean, that helps all, all over the field. So, um, but, but certainly in the red zone, it can be somewhat of a, of a help, especially when running option routes or things of that nature. Brock said that you got on him during the Iowa game for being a spectator watching David. I mean, was it was it hard not to be a spectator at some point in that game? Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, kudos to him. He did a really good job. And but at the end of the day, um, I want these guys to be focused on going out there and fighting for their teammates 24/7. Like I just, you know, I'm. I'm just about that. I'm about that life. I want to go fight and beat the crap out of the people across from us every single play and not let up one bit. I want to consistently pile it on more and more and more and more, never let off the gas, all right, being aggressive. And that's what Coach Brown says all the time. That's my mentality as a person. That's my. That's how I want my the mentality of my guys to be, is to constantly be aggressive. So if you out there are watching, then go get a ticket and go sit in the stands and you can watch, okay? Otherwise, go out there and be aggressive and go attack these guys. So if I'm showing up at your house Sunday, in a normal costume, what am I getting in my candy bowl? Oh, man. My wife does a great job of just stocking a stockpile of various types of candy. So you will have your pick from gummies to chocolate to anything you're looking for. We're pretty much going to have it at the Shepherd household, okay? <laughs> no doubt.